Let us pray. Oh God, we pray now that as we reflect on your word, that you will give a word to us that is personal, a word that is deep and a word that is transformative. And so, God, we wait on you who has been our help in ages past and is our hope for years to come, our shelter from the dangers and snares of this life. And so it is in you that we hide. It is in you that we find a place of refuge. We pray that you'll cover us with your hand and hold us in the cleft of the rock. And so let the words of my mouth and the reflections of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O oh God, our strength and our Redeemer and the people of God say, Amen and Amen. My brothers and sisters, it is God's will for us to live victorious lives every single day of our lives. Every single year, it is God's will for you and for me that we live victorious lives. And I submit to us that it is possible for us to live victorious lives every day and every year. We can live without hopelessness, fear, and utter frustration. In this year and in every year, that we will face. To live in victory, we need to follow God's plan for our lives because as Christians, we know that each day is really about living in relationship with God. And if we are going to experience a victory every day of our lives, we cannot do so outside of our relationship with God. We cannot stray. We cannot be found outside of the fold and still expect the victories that God has promised to those who believe and trust in him. People around the world do some strange things at the end of a year or at the beginning of a year in the hope that good things will come their way in the new year. There are all kinds of strange practices in our world. There are people who bathe with special herbs or bush, go to special spiritual people to have certain baths, with the hope that these things will ward off evil spirits and that they will be covered with good spirits or with angels. There are other persons who walk around with some bad smelling things in very small bags pinned on their clothes or underneath their clothes with the hope that these things will offer protection. I thank God you don't know what I'm talking about. These things do not happen in Barbados. Praise the Lord. There are some persons who have strange traditions like eating black eyed peas and rice at the end of the year with the hope that this will ensure healthy lives, that they will be free of sickness for the rest of the year. Yeah, there's some strange, strange practices around the world at the end of a year or at the beginning of a year. People do all kinds of strange things with the hope that prosperity will follow them, with the hope that good health will follow them, with the hope that they will be successful in all things. What can we do as we face an uncertain future? As people of God, as people of faith, 
And we do face an uncertain future, brothers and sisters, right now in our world. As we face this uncertain future that is riddled with crime and violence, with a level of selfishness and self-centeredness that probably has been created by the overuse of technology. And so people no longer consider the need for community and the need to be in relationship with other people. And so our world is a very strange world. We are told that there are viruses occurring for which we have no known vaccine. And there are vaccine for viruses for which people are not very trusting. There are natural disasters happening every day. Earthquakes and powerful tropical storms and other such tornadoes and other storms that in a moment devastate entire communities and or entire nations. Add to this the fact that we all face trials and problems on a personal level that can suddenly bring sorrow and pain and even death. And there are some of you here who have known sorrow and pain by the sudden death of a loved one that has sunk you into a level of grief and bereavement with the shock of the death of a loved one or some diagnosis, something that has happened in your own body and you have gotten the shocking news of a dreaded illness or the dreaded illness of a loved one. Yes, we have seen trouble. And yes, we know personally trouble and trials and tribulations and hardship. But there's a man in scripture who was acquainted with trouble and crises. And so I draw your attention to 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and the first 11 verses. Hear what the Apostle Paul says. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the church of God, which is at Corinth, with all the saints who are in all Achaia, grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort who comforts us in all our tribulations, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as the suffering of Christ abounds in us, so our consolation also abounds through Christ. Now, if we are afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation which is effective for enduring the same suffering which we also suffer. Or, if we are comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope for you is steadfast, because we know that as you are partakers of the suffering, so also you will partake of the consolation. For we do not want you to be ignorant, brothers and sisters, of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were burdened beyond measure about strength, so that we despaired even of life. Yes, we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and does deliver us in whom we trust, that he will still deliver us. You also helping together in prayer for us, that thanks may be given 
by many persons on our behalf for the gift granted to us through many. The word of the Lord. You see, my brothers and sisters, in this text, you will note that Paul deals with the subject of suffering. And certainly he knew all about the subject personally and frequently. So exactly how did Paul continue victoriously through every hardship? In viewing this, we can learn how we too can face the future with assurance and peace and conviction. And so there are a couple of the few things that I wish to lift up for us very quickly. First of all, we must know the salvation of God. If we are going to endure and experience victory in light of the present suffering and challenges of our world and our own personal life, we must know personally the power of God to save and redeem and transform and hold us together. It is indeed the power of his salvation that keeps us when the going gets tough and when the tough gets going. Paul relates how he has seen and has been through a great deal of suffering. And it is apparent that the previous year had not been as easy for him. But note that he has not lost any hope of salvation. Why? He is confident because salvation is not dependent on the condition under which he lived. You see, Paul had something that the world could not take away from him. Even though the world tried to crush him, even though he was imprisoned, even though he was beaten, even though he was persecuted and prosecuted, even though he experienced hunger, and even though he experienced all kinds of threat, Paul knew that they could have taken many things away from him, but they could not take away from him that which gave him reason for living. They could not take away from him that which gave joy. They could not take away from him that which got him up every morning, ready and available to be used by God and for God. Paul knew that even though the world and the powers that be could have taken away many things from him, they could not take away his salvation. They could not take away his hope of glory. They could not take away his hope of eternal life with God in Jesus Christ. And so you see, my brothers and sisters, that is why I say to us that it is our salvation and our salvation story that gives us victory every day. Yes, we will face all kinds of challenges and difficulties. Sometimes our bodies are going to be affected with diseases. Sometimes there is going to be lack in our lives. Sometimes we are going to experience the wrath of others. Sometimes we are going to experience natural disasters that we have absolutely no control over. Loved ones are going to die. We are going to experience extreme pressure at work and in community. We are going to experience relationship challenges and issues. But yet we are able to get up every morning with our heads lifted up, with our song praise, with our hearts bubbling with joy, because these things, though they are distressing, they cannot change what God has given to us. They cannot change what God has done for us, and they cannot change what God has planned and purpose for our lives. Yeah, there will be many challenges, but they cannot take away that which only God alone has the power to give and has the power to take away. 
And so we can have victory because we can say like St. Paul, it is no longer I that liveth. It is Christ that liveth in me. We can say like St. Paul, I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, nor height nor depth, nor any other creature can separate me from the love of God which is in Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. And so my song of praise comes from the fact that I know in whom I've believed, and I know that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. That I know that I know that Jesus is mine. That I know that I know that Jesus is able to do more than I can ask. Or imagine. So, in order for us to live victoriously, we must know in a personal way that Jesus is mine. When last have you asked the question of your soul? So, how is it with you and God? I remember the parable that Jesus told of the man whose land brought forth abundantly. And he says, I will take it easy now. I will put up my feet. I will build larger barns for I have much put up for many years to come. And the angel of death appeared to him and said, You fool, this very night your life is demanded of you. Whose then will these be? When last have you asked your soul, Are you right with God? Have you made your calling an election show? Can you say for sure that you know, that you know, that you know that you're saved? And that you're saved not because of what you have done, but because of what God has done in Jesus Christ that has saved you. We must be assured of our salvation. The second thing quickly that we must be assured of is a spirit of determination. To live well in this new year, my brothers and sisters, we must keep our God-given responsibilities in the forefront of our minds and hearts. Doing this will assist in helping us concentrate on the positives rather than wallowing in the negatives of life. You see... When you are walking with Jesus, doing his will and bringing him glory, a peace surrounds us that life cannot steal from us. Paul had faced a very difficult period in his life before writing the letter from which we are studying tonight. Yet in the midst of all his troubles, he writes with confidence and determination. He did so because he had been walking with Jesus. Doing God's will, my brothers and sisters, helps us look at the needs of others rather than focusing on our own trials and troubles. There's a story of a man who committed suicide. His financial books were in good order, and so was the rest of his life. He left a note that read in part, not a word of encouragement. In 30 years, I'm fed up. Apparently, he gave up because he had not a single encourager in his life. Somebody is waiting for you to share a word of encouragement, a word of consolation, a word of hope. This morning, we read from the Gospel of Luke of Anna and Simeon, 
Both of them had struggles and challenges. Anna's husband had died after seven years of being married. Anna was now in the 84th year of her life. Simeon was a very old man at the end of life. And yet both of them found themselves in the temple when the child was being offered up and both of them offered words of consolation and words of hope and encouragement to, to a young couple who obviously was struggling because they came in and offered the sacrifice for poor people. They offered to turtle doves or to pigeons. According to the law of the Lord, that was the sacrifice to be offered by people who could not offer a lamb or persons who could not offer a bull. They offered for a poor people offering and yet Anna and Simeon were there to offer words of hope and consolation and so I'm saying my brothers and sisters if we are going to be victorious in 2024 we need encouragers in our lives but more importantly and firstly we need to become an encourager in somebody's life you see our world has become so negative and our society has become so negative. We always looking for someone to pull down. We always looking to throw cold water on something. We always trying to find something to criticize. And I'm saying to us that as church, we have to be better. We have to do better. We have to be better than the world. And if persons cannot experience encouragement and affirmation and consolation in the workplace and in the world when they come to church they must be affirmed they must be encouraged sometimes people come in here burdened so burdened by life and situations and sometimes if we are not careful our first greeting to them is one that sinks their spirit is one that makes them feel worse and you know when someone is not feeling well when they're not feeling life and the joy and the peace and the love of others it reflects in every area of their life and sometimes when they come to the place where they expect to be affirmed expect to be encouraged they are beaten down they are discouraged they are thrown out with words and with actions but the Lord would have me say to us that if we are going to be victims victorious together we need to be encouragers Paul had an encourager in his life Timothy had an encourager and Paul and Timothy became encouragers for the church that they planted including the church in Corinth when was the last time you told someone how beautiful they look when was the last time you told someone how well the outfit fits them? When was the last time you told someone how beautiful their hairstyle is and how much you admire something about them? Rather than constantly criticizing, let's begin to affirm and encourage so that we can all win, win, win together. Doing God's will will help us look at the needs of others rather than focusing on our trials and our own troubles. Thirdly and quickly, we must have appreciation. Paul speaks of God of all comfort and uses the word parakletos which means the God who stands beside us. Paul rejoiced in every situation because he had an appreciation for the presence of God in his life. Paul did not go around with a sour face. Even though he was experiencing trials and hardship, 
He found things for which he showed appreciation. And I hear the songwriter saying, count your blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. And so the next time someone asks you, how are you? Instead of starting with all the negatives, instead of starting with the, with the pain in the knee and the fact that the grandchild is giving trouble and the fact that this boss is this and the husband is this and the wife is this. Hear the songwriter, count your blessings, name them one by one and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. No part of the reason why, and I don't want to blow anybody's bubble, but I think a lot of the talk shows are complete waste of time. Everybody calling to talk about the problems. Identifying the problems. And don't get me wrong. Yes, we need to identify the problems. But who's going to step up to be part of the solution? Who's going to step up to say, yes, these are the problems. But here is how we can fix them. Here are some ideas. This is what we can do. Here is how we can mobilize our community. This is how we can mobilize our church. This is how we can mobilize the schools. This is how we can mobilize the young people. This is what we can do. But everybody talk and then go feeling good that they have done a good job by talking. To what end? When there are so many things that we can affirm and when people are in an environment where they are being affirmed, they flourish. When people are in an environment when they do something, it is thanked and affirmed. They flourish and, and then the organization flourish and all of us flourish together. The opposite is a toxic environment where nothing grows, everything dies. Paul showed appreciation. He counted his blessings and he named them one by one. And let me say finally that we must have a sense of dedication. Many people make New Year resolutions, but they don't keep them. That diet you committed to last year only lasted for a couple of weeks, right? or maybe a couple of days, or probably a few hours. It is a strange thing, but a New Year resolution can feel like a cement block tied around your neck. Most resolutions don't last more than three weeks into the New Year. Therefore, as Christians, we don't need to make a resolution for the New Year, but rather... We must have a new dedication to keep our commitment to God each day of our lives. So that when we meet next Sunday and we say, I am no longer my own, I belong to you. We must do all that we can to keep our commitment to God. And notice the difference. Resolutions are commitments to self. Dedication is commitment to God. And that's where we need to live. Because you see, our help comes from the Lord. I hear the psalmist saying, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. But where will my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. If I make a resolution, I am making a commitment to myself and in my own strength and my own energy, I'm going to try to live this out. But when I dedicate myself to God, it is God who helps me to become all that God has created me to be. And yes, there are times when I fall, but I trust the mighty hand of God to lift me up and pick me up and put me back on my feet. Yes, I will fail, but I trust the mighty God who is able to do more than I can ask or think or even imagine. And so my victory is not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit of God. And so when the Goliaths of my life rise up against me, I come to them in the mighty name of God. I hear David saying, you come to me with javelin and spear and sword, but I come to you in the name 
name of the Lord of hosts, for the battle is the Lord's. And so when I dedicate myself to God, I'm trusting God daily to carry me. I'm trusting God daily to pick me up when I fall. I'm trusting God daily to set my feet on solid ground. When I dedicate my life, I'm able to say, I have an anchor that keeps my soul set fast and show while the billows roll fast and to the rock that cannot move, grounded firm and deep where? In the Savior's love. And so, instead of making resolutions, we make commitment to God. Trusting God to hold us. So my brothers and sisters, I want to challenge you today. Even as I challenge myself this night, in this last hour of 2023, let's make something beautiful of it. Let's make a commitment to God and allow God to give us the grace to keep it all the days of our lives. Tonight, I invite you to make a step of faith. I have the cross in the center of the aisle there. And, and there's a reason for it there. I'm going to tell you now. For those of you who are wondering why I cross tonight. I also have some stones or pebbles. Because I'm mindful of the fact that you have been through a difficult year. And, and there have been some, some, some stones in your life. There have been some rocks in your life. You have had some hard times. You have carried some burdens. You, you, you have carried, you have been through days of darkness. You have been through the valley of the shadow of death. You have been through situations and, 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 and you have been burdened with all of these stuff that you have been carrying. But I also know along the way, God has been walking right next to you. And God has been saying, my child, release this one. Give me this one. And you have clung closely to it. You have clutched it with a tight hand. And you have been carrying it, thinking that you have the strength and the wisdom to carry it. But tonight, God sees that you're weary. And he says, come unto me all who are weary and carrying heavy burden, and I will give you rest. And so Sister Angela is going to put the stones, the rocks in the center and as we sing all to Jesus I surrender, you are invited to symbolically lay down those burdens, lay down those issues, lay down those challenges. And hear me and hear me well, take as many as you want. For some persons, one rock will do. But for some persons, you may need five or ten. Or you may know somebody at home and, and you want to stand in proxy. You, 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 you want to stand in the gap for them. And you may also want to take one for them. Believe in God. That tonight you can be free. That tonight you can be delivered from that which you have carried all through 2023. And for some persons all through your life you have been carrying some rocks. Would you trust God tonight?